Welcome back to your Patros Review. In this episode, The Swab. A film that will basically start Robert De Niro, but not really, not quite. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back to your Patros Review. And I'm your host, Milo Sipka, and join me as I'm taking a wild world through science fiction action horror, or from a personal collection. There's a bit of mosquitoes here, anyway. Now, in this episode, we'll look at the film The Swap, which was a one of the very early canon film, you know, the canon films of the 1980s, one of the very early work from the late 1970s, and a film that's pretty controversial. I mean, Robert De Niro is so angry by this that he nearly launched a lawsuit. <laughs> the film is available in public domain, and the copy I just showed you was well, the closest thing I had to a legit release, but it was still public domain. The film was released in the USA on the 7th of May, 1979, and directed by two directors, actually, one, John C. Broderick and Jordan Leon Doppelis, whatever. Anyway. Now, this film, like I said, is available in various public domain source DVDs. The review copy I showed you I think, comes from a cheap disc and shoot by Showtime DVD, which is the closest this film gets to a legit release, with some homemade trivia and filmography for Robert De Niro. Now for the story. Freshly released from prison after serving a 10-year sentence for an uns unspecified crime, Vitor Nicoletti heads to the cemetery where his mother and younger brother Sam are buried. And there he swears that he will track down the mysterious killer who iced Sam in his editing of his years before and gets revenge. While spending the day tracking down the few people who were Sam's friends in the week before his death, Vitor learns that Sam was invited to a swank house party for a weekend away, while one of his friends began having relationship difficulties with her husband at the time. Intrigued by this, Vito visits the ex-husband, now a politician. An attempt is then made on Vito's life while he's sleeping in his motel room but survives, thanks to being rescued by Sam's old girlfriend. Now armed with the knowledge that somebody out there wants him dead, Vito decides to head to a film lab to process the reels of film that, film that Sam had left him. Sam was a uh, porno filmmaker. It is while watching the film reels that Vito learns that Sam was making porno films, and what's more, he had already met the killer. Now in 1969, before he became a big time star, a young Robert De Niro starred in an early generation indie film called Sam's Song, where he played a documentary filmmaker doing the doco on Richard Nixon, who gets invited to a swanky high class house party and then sees the ugly side to the lives of rich people. Also, the story went. The film was never theatrically released, probably due to the fact it was pretty rough to watch and the indie genre didn't really hit the necessary cloud to be financially successful. Or for the actors involved, especially De Niro, went on to much bigger things. But the footage of Sam's Song still lay dormant and someone had a plan for it. In 1979, producers Menham Golan and Yoram Globus, then working on their fledgling film company, Canon Films, decided to buy the footage and retool it with the intention of cashing in the success of De Niro. By then, De Niro was a bit of a hit, big time star. They hired another director to film some new footage that used as a framing device to accommodate the parts of the old film they wanted to use. After that was all done, the resulting project was then released on the title of The Swap. How appropriate. <laughs> Having learned about this unauthorized use of his performance, De Niro was angered so much that he nearly launched a lawsuit, but ultimately backed down, probably because, probably because he saw how futile such action was going to be against this kind of thing, given the lack of success the film ended up having. In fact, the lawsuit will only invite people to seek this thing out and watch it, thereby rewar rewarding the thieves with more money. De Niro is actually a lot smarter than most people think. The swap has since languished in the trash can of film obscurity thanks to its lack of anything resembling pro proper production values. Don't get me wrong, the original footage was pretty rough in quality, but still looked pretty decent. Although when it was made, the genre it belonged to wasn't quite ready. Although the new footage was strictly low-grade stuff, and none acting on offer here. The new footage was a pretty standard revenge flow that went by on the slimmest of plot dressing. Bloody mosquitoes. With Anthony Achanota, a seriously monotonous actor to see judging by his performance here, playing a crim who is after the revenge of his brother's murder. The, the storyline is going to be, it's going by purely the flimsiest plot ever handled for a 1970s cheap jack thriller. All it consists of is trying to visiting various people and listening to them describe the last days of his late brother. And of all the stories they tell overlap considerably to the point that the effect is like asking a small group of friends about the same movie they watched together and each person spends 10 minutes explaining a certain scene before the next friend tells their scene with a brief recap. And making the most half-assed effort I've ever seen anybody make in order to find out who killed his brother. It would have been quick and easy to develop the films of reels the film first and then realize who kills brother straight away. The change of the nature of the films De Niro is making from Nixon, Dockers to Sam and Samsung's to porn flicks in this one is a rather distasteful decision that only makes the whole thing seem more unplayable. The feeling the viewer gets when it's revealed that his girlfriend was underage when De Niro's character started in his porno works is one of pure revulsion and reminds one of the infamous underage porno queen Tracy Lawson in her career in the late 1980s and early 1990s 
and instrument scandal emerged once she retired from the profession, which is why all porn is made these days. Always start and end of a towel card giving the details of whomever keeps records of the cast and crew at a particular location. The story goes along so slowly that you can get up, do some housework, and make a 10 minute phone call, and get back to the film and not really miss anything. Given this it was, the film was made in the very late 1970s, there was ample opportunities for the filmmakers to include graphic violence, sex and nudity in this, but it seemed the Golden Globus weren't really thinking of that at the time. It was only a non effort that nobody in their right mind would want to watch, let alone consider this a decent film. I have seen some bad films in my time, but this pizza, piece of shit is just too bad to ever work in the slightest. If you're a De Niro fan and want to see every film that's ever made, just so you can tick off the whole filmography, I'm trying to get this as cheaply as possible. Don't pay more than a couple bucks for this. And all the copies are public domain anyway. Now for the gore foot. There's no gore foot, there are a couple bloody bullet riddle shirts. There's no nudity in this either. Hold on, there were a couple of very, very brief breast beaks, but they ain't anything to tell your friends about. I've signed a swap at D-, minus, a 1 out of 10. Meaning it is a terrible film that should not be sweat out at all, unless you're doing a run of the Robert De Niro filmography. Or a diehard Robert De Niro fan just wants to see every film he's ever made. Anyway, that's it for that review of the swap, and that's it for this review.